Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we are graphing quadratics in standard form. This is on Khan Academy, so let me go ahead and jump right into how do we graph in standard form. So we're given this first function here, and it looks complicated, but I'm going to break it down and show you that it's really not that bad. So the standard form for a parabola, for a quadratic, is like this, okay? We have ax squared plus bx plus c. So um, depending on what the equation says... And you'll notice the different coefficients here, okay? So we have this negative one-third in front of the x squared, and then we have a two in front of the x, and then we have this negative four at the end. Depending on what's there, that will give you your a, b, and c values, okay? So a couple things to note. One, a quadratic needs that x squared. There may or may not be an x present. It depends on if the coefficient is zero. And then in the same thing with the negative four. If it's plus zero, then you won't see it. But the absolute essential is it has to have that x squared. But a, b, and c is actually pretty easy to find. It's just the values that are the coefficients in front of the x squared, the x, and then the constant. So for my a value in this case, it is negative one third. That's it. So it's just the value that is in front of the x squared. For my b value, it's the value, the coefficient of x. So it's just two. And then for the c value, I'm going to make it a negative 4, not just a positive 4. It's got to be a negative 4. Now, one thing you're, you're going to notice is this negative 4, this C value, actually is your y-intercept also. So keep that in mind. That's one of your points. We're going to use that consistently through this uh, Khan Academy exercise is we're always going to graph that y-intercept. Now, besides the y-intercept, we need some other critical points primarily the vertex. And how do we find the vertex? Well, we got to start by finding the axis of symmetry, the x value for the vertex. So as you can see here, the vertex needs that x value, and that's the same as the value for your axis of symmetry. And how do you find that value for the axis of symmetry? Well, you just plug in negative b over 2a. You also see it written b over negative 2a. I just like having the negative in the top, but I just wanted you to be aware. It could be written as uh, b over negative 2a. So first thing I'm going to do, my B value is 2, so I'm going to make it negative 2. My C value, again, that's just the y-intercept. We don't need it. But my A value is negative 1 third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 2 times this negative 1 third. Okay? So that, that's multiplication there. 2 times that negative 1 third. Now I just have to simplify this fraction. Now, if you're not comfortable with fractions, what I would do is I would just plug in this into the calculator and see what it spits out. Okay, so if you're not comfortable with that, with uh, complex fractions, just put it into the calculator. That will work. Okay, but I'm going to simplify this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it over here, actually, negative two over two times negative one third. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I can cancel out the negatives because if we have a negative in the top, negative in the bottom, they can cancel out, and I know it's going to be a positive, so, so it's a positive. I'm going to erase that plus sign because you don't do that. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out the twos, and I'm going to be left with one in the top and then over a positive one-third. I'm going to use the keep change flip rule for division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this problem. I'll show you what process I'm doing here. So I'm going to do one divided by one-third. Well, we know that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, so I'm going to change this to one, keep change, change to multiplication, flip, multiply by the reciprocal. Now I have one times three. So this is gonna be x equals, let me change the color here. This is gonna be x equals three. Did I change it? I did not. Okay, so now I know my x value. My x value is, let me make it red. I should have made it red. Here we go, three. What does that tell me? Well, I just said my axis of symmetry is x equals three, okay? It's very important that you write the x there, x equals, because that's an equation of a line. And this is what the axis of symmetry is. The axis of symmetry splits the parabola into like the two halves that are symmetrical, okay? Now, now that I have my vertex, my x value for my vertex, I still need my y value. And there's not an equation for that. What we have to do is we simply have to plug in x equals three into our original parabolic equation, this quadratic, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna rewrite this whole thing. I'm gonna say y instead of h of x, that's the same thing, equals negative one over three. I'm gonna put parentheses here, plus two, parentheses again. Anywhere I see an x, I'm just putting parentheses. And now I'm gonna substitute that positive three. Oh, I forgot the squared, sorry. So I'm gonna put that positive three in there. Now, let's simplify from here. 
So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do exponents, order of operations here. So exponents, there's nothing to do in the parentheses, I know that's first. So we have three squared, that is nine, I'm gonna take it over here. So I have y equals, I'm just gonna use all red, I'm not gonna change color that many times. So we have three squared, that's nine, I still need to multiply it by negative one third. That's not gonna be too bad. Two times three, that's six, and then a minus four. Okay, it's very important that we know how to do these like order of operations calculations, okay? I notice a lot of students struggle with this step. They forget what they did in algebra. Very important that we remember to take it step by step, line by line, very organized, okay? So we have y equals, I'm gonna do multiplication x. Negative one third times nine gives me negative three. Plus six, minus four. So I have negative three plus six, that gives me positive three minus four. And I just finish it off. And that is going to be negative one. So my y value is negative one for my vertex, okay? So here's my vertex. I have one point right here. And I also have my y-intercept, which is negative four. And really that's the point zero comma negative four. Okay, y-intercept is the x value zero, and the y-intercept is obviously the number that we got, which is negative four. So I'm gonna plot those points. So three negative one is my vertex. And Okay, well first, let me show you a common mistake. So three, negative one. What I see a lot is I see a lot of people going like this. Okay, my y-intercept is negative four. And then three, negative one, they'll put it right here. The problem with this is, is I didn't put my vertex at the correct point. I just put two points there, and my vertex is the one that has that little, this one right here, okay? It's the spot where it changes direction. You need this one to be at three, negative one and you need the y-intercept to be this one that's not the vertex, okay? So that's a really important note. I see that mistake a lot, and they're like, I'm putting the two points, but I'm not getting the correct answer. It's because you're putting the vertex in the wrong spot. So three negative one, just check, double checking, and then negative four, okay? And we can double check this too, because anytime a quadratic has a negative out in front of the x squared term, it's gonna open down, okay? So it's like negative, this is what I write, I go, it's negative, so it opens down, kind of like a frowny face, okay? So negative, it's a frowny, and it's opening down, okay? So that's what's happening there, and we can check our answer, and we got it. Okay, move on to the next one. This one's gonna be a little bit easier, but the process remains the same. So first off, actually, we're gonna move my vertex over here, and I'm gonna make the negative six my y-intercept, okay? Another thing. I know this is negative in front of the x squared, so I know it's gonna open down as opposed to opening up. So I know my vertex is somewhere up here. We're gonna find out exactly where, okay? So here's my y-intercept. Again, like I said, negative six, boom, right there. Now I, knew, now I need to do x equals negative b over two a. This will tell me what my x value is for my vertex, okay? There's my vertex. I need to find out what my x and my y are, but I start with the x. Now, before I get to uh, negative b over 2a should probably identify all those letters. So a is negative one right there, negative. If it's just a negative, it's negative one. B is negative six, and then c, we already kind of handled, we don't really care about that one right now, is negative six. So b, if it's already negative, then we need to flip the sign. So negative negative b would be positive six. Then I'm gonna apply two times my negative, a, uh, not negative a, my negative one, which is a. So now I have six divided by negative two, that equals negative three. So I know my axis of symmetry is over here. Boom, over there. So I need to move this guy over here somewhere. Now I don't know where the y value is. To find the y value, I need to plug in negative three into my original equation. So I have y, I don't really care about that g of x, equals negative, I'm gonna do parentheses because I'm gonna be substituting there, and then minus six. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in this negative three for x into both spots where I see that x. So I have negative three there and negative three there. Anytime it's a negative, I notice students make mistakes. You gotta be careful with negatives. So we have y equals, if we square the negative, it's gonna be become positive, but then we still have this negative out in front. So keep the negative out in front, square the negative three, that's nine, and then I have negative six times negative three, that's a positive 18, and then I have to subtract six from there. Now I have negative nine plus 18, that's positive nine, minus six is that's three. So now I know my, my vertex is gonna be negative three, that was my x value, my axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry right here, boom, axis of symmetry. And then I have, I plugged it in, I got three for y, there's my x, here's my y. I already have my y-intercept, that's negative six, so I need to take this thing up to positive three, and that's what it looks like. Just like that, negative three, positive three for my vertex, negative six for my y-intercept. 
and there I go, okay? I'm gonna do these next couple ones really quick. Ah, this is a great example because look at my A value, negative, or not my A value, B value. Look at my C value, it's zero, okay? What does that tell me? It tells me my y-intercept is at zero and it's already there, okay? Now, I don't want my vertex to be there, so let's move that off. There I go, okay? So now it's looking better, but I know my y-intercept is zero. Now I need to find my x value. Negative b over 2a, that will tell me what my x is. Negative b is positive 6. 2 times negative 3 over 2. Okay, so we're going to have a negative value for x because there's only one negative there. I'm going to multiply the bottom first, actually. I'm going to leave the top alone. I'm going to multiply the bottom. That's like 2 over 1 times negative 3 over 2. I'm going to cancel out the 2s, okay, because one's in the top, one's in the bottom, and I'm left with negative 3 over 1 or just negative 3. Now I know that that's equal to negative two. Looks way more complicated than it actually is, but if you're confused, just take negative three over two, convert it to a decimal. Let me just show you over here. Two times negative three over two is negative 1.5. I didn't mean to cross that off. <laughs> Let me erase that, there you go. And you can just do the same thing and do six divided by two times negative 1.5. Make sure you put that in parentheses on your calculator. You're gonna get the same thing. You're gonna get negative two. Okay, long story short, we're gonna plug in negative two y equals negative 3 over 2 times negative 2 squared minus 6 times negative 2. Again, you got to be careful with the negatives. Square the negative 2 first, we get 4, and we have to multiply that by negative 3 over 2. Again, change it to a decimal if you're struggling with those fractions, okay? So I'm going to cross off the 4 and the 2. That gives me a 2, so I have negative 3 times the 2. That gives me negative 6 plus 12. That gives me a positive 6 for y. So my my uh, vertex is negative two comma six. I already have my y-intercept, that's zero. That's my c value, okay, y-intercept, already done. And then I have negative two, six for my vertex. Negative two, positive six. Okay, and the reason why I know that's correct is because it's opening down, that's the negative there. And everything else looks pretty good. So we have negative two, six, zero, check it. All right, last one, we're gonna do this fast. My goodness, they're giving us fractions every time. Okay, here we go. So we have A, B, my C value, negative one. That one's easy, negative two, and then we have positive one over five. If you want, again, make that point two, okay? So I know this one opens up. I know the y-intercept is negative one. Let's move that off. Y-intercept is negative one, okay? And now let's go ahead and do negative B over two A. I'm gonna treat this as fast as possible. A negative B, two, over two times one over five. All right, this one's gonna be a little tricky. Well, we can cross off the twos here. I forgot the negative. Oh, yeah, I already made that negative. So negative B, done, two times A, good. Okay, so now I have one over one-fifth. That's the same thing as one divided by one over five. That's one times five over one. That equals five. So that equals five. X equals five. That's my X value. I'm going to plug in five squared. Again, use this, use this uh, calculator and change it to decimal if you're struggling. 25 times one-fifth. Minus 10, minus 1, that gives me 5, minus 10, minus 1, that gives me negative 6. So my, we have x equals, what I get? x equals 5, and then negative 6 for my uh, y value. x value, y value. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. I'm just going to check my work real fast. 5, minus 10, negative 5, minus 6. Okay, good. So 5, negative 6 is my vertex. 5 negative six, and I need it to open up because it's positive. Everything else looks great, and let's check it. And we're done, okay. So that's all there is to it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment if you need help with anything else, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.